the Empire and its remnants have never just used one type of trooper unit. Certain worlds and terrains demand different gear, skills and training, not to mention also variation in weapons and fighting skills depending on the battle the troopers are assigned to. Today I'm going to show you every Stormtrooper variant in the Empire and its remnants that I could find. And this video will only be Star Wars canon. I'm going to make another video about Star Wars Legends so keep an eye out for that because there's definitely some interesting and also some pretty weird trooper types out there. Hey everyone it's Andrew. <laughs> the standard Stormtrooper first appeared in the original Star Wars A New Hope and are based on the clone troopers from the Galactic Republic. Believe it or not the Imperial Stormtroopers are actually referred to as the elite troops of the Empire and were spread across the galaxy to maintain peace and order. Not only were they deployed to multiple battles but they were also used to guard Imperial installations, Imperial higher-ups, used during escort operations and also occupied the Death Star and Star Destroyers of the Empire. They are of course the most common and also most clumsy version of Trooper. The Scout Trooper, also known as Biker Scouts, were mostly involved in reconnaissance missions and were often stationed at Imperial facilities and various points of interest that required their surroundings to be scouted, therefore getting the nickname of Biker Troopers Scout Troopers. They first appeared in Star Wars Episode 6 Return of the Jedi and their helmets actually have enhanced visors and long range communications to help reconnaissance in the area. They used a variety of different weapons, most commonly the EC-17 Holdout Blaster or Scout Pistol and also a variety of sniper rifles including the DLT-19X, the Pulse Cannon, the E-11S and a bunch of others. Although their aim was never much good as far as I've heard. Now there were also Scout Trooper Commanders. Some of you might remember them from Jedi Fallen Order and at times they could wield riot shields and riot batons, which the regular Scout Troopers also used at times in closer ranged combat. For example, if they were trying to fight a Jedi, which was generally a big mistake for the Scout Trooper. <laughs> Patrol Troopers are a newer type of Storm Trooper in the Empire. They actually first appeared in Solo a Star Wars Story in the new canon and also made an appearance in Star Wars Jedi Survivor. Patrol Troopers generally acted as a rapid response force for urban environments, much like a police force. They were used mostly to patrol the streets of most of the worlds the Empire had control of, and when doing this they generally used patrol speeder bikes. Their lighter armor also enabled the troopers to have higher movement capabilities, and apparently their helmets gave them real-time data on the city and its obstacles. Interestingly, they used similar weapons to the scout troopers, most of them carrying the EC-17 holdout blasters. Not that that helped them much when facing a Jedi. The Stormtrooper Commander was a privileged position amongst Imperial forces. Wearing an orange pauldron that signifies their commanding position, Stormtrooper Commander was the title referring to the Imperial officer in command of a Star Destroyer's entire Stormtrooper force. And these guys have actually made multiple appearances throughout Star Wars, first appearing in A New Hope, they're also in a few episodes of The Mandalorian, they appeared in Star Wars Rebels, even an episode of The Clone Wars. And also of course in Star Wars Jedi Fallen Order. They're the ones with the orange pauldron and I'm pretty sure they throw grenades at you. And then you throw them back. <laughs> Stormtrooper snipers were originally clone sharpshooters and in some ways were quite similar to scout troopers, basically just another version of a specialized stormtrooper. Sniper troopers were equipped with a visor attached to their helmet and also a red pauldron over their shoulder. These guys actually first appeared in the mobile game Star Wars Commander, which no longer exists, but were also featured in Battlefront 2, in Star Wars Force Arena, and Star Wars Rebels Recon missions. In Battlefront 2, they appear as a scout trooper variant. These guys used anything from E11S sniper rifles to DLT. 19x targeting blasters. However, we're also able to use IQA 11 blasters, A280 blast rifles, N2 242s, and also cycler rifles at times, channeling their inner Tuscan Raider. <laughs> This is one of the more obscure types of stormtroopers, the Forest Trooper, are Imperial Scout Troopers specifically trained for combat in a forest environment and are usually the ones wearing camouflage to conceal their presence. They were mainly stationed in locations like Kashyyyk and other planets with dense forests. And so far these guys have actually only appeared in Aftermath Life Debt, the Star Wars novel from 2016. Artillery Stormtroopers, also known as Mortar Stormtroopers, have so far only appeared in the Mandalorian Chapter 14. They're responsible for handling mortars and other indirect types of firepower, launching explosive projectiles at a determined angle to drop them on a calculated target. They can be identified by their armor, which has a yellow pauldron to separate them based on their speciality, and a military backpack to carry their explosives, along with some other yellow markings 
markings on their helmet and the rest of their armor. And after the Galactic Empire fell, they continued to serve as Imperial remnants under the command of Moff Gideon. The Desert Sand Trooper, otherwise known as just a Sand Trooper, were mostly deployed to outer rim worlds such as Tatooine. Sand Troopers were actually equipped with cooling fans and sand filters in their helmet, and also carried extra rations and water in their backpacks to survive harsher conditions on planets like Tatooine. A planet that not only has two suns and ridiculous amount of heat, but also dangerous tribes like Tusken Raiders and all kinds of bounty hunters on the loose. They're mostly seen carrying RT-97C heavy blaster rifles, suited with optic enhancements that allowed for longer range use. And what's interesting about these guys is there are actually a few variations of the one trooper class. There were Dubak troopers, who were the ones who ride on the backs of the Dubaks, heavy sand troopers, who carried heavier weapons, sand trooper commanders, who were just in charge of all the other sand troopers, and also sand trooper scouts, who served as scouts. Who knew that a stormtrooper variation could have variations of itself? Heavy assault troopers are another variation of the stormtrooper, which wield a heavier weapon, such as the Z6 rotary blaster cannon. You probably also recognize the heavy assault trooper from games like Jedi Fallen Order and Jedi Survivor. The Riot Control Trooper, otherwise known as Imperial Riot Troopers or simply Riot Troopers, were an Imperial Stormtrooper variant that were tasked with carrying out arrests of protesters and dispersion of disruptive activities. Generally, they weren't armed with blaster and instead used batons and electro staffs and sometimes even riot shields. And these guys first appeared in Star Wars Galactic Defense, the tower defense game, and also appeared in Force Arena and also Battlefront 2. Jump Troopers are also known as Rocket Troopers, Imperial Jet Troopers, or jetpack troopers. And they use jetpacks to gain temporary air superiority. In other words, the high ground. <laughs> over adversaries, breach fortified walls by flying over them, and even carry out airstrikes. And this type of trooper actually had a bunch of different variants to suit diverse planetary environments. For example, there were desert versions, arctic versions, and forest jump troopers, each of which specialized in a specific type of combat operations. Occasionally, they wore specialized armor, and some variants even have oxygen tubes connected from their backpacks to their helmets, much like TIE fighter pilots. And this is likely to account for the change in altitude. If they're flying up high, they need oxygen so they don't stop breathing and die. They first appeared in Star Wars Commander, but have also made appearances in Star Wars Battlefront, Jedi Survivor, Star Wars Force Arena, and also several episodes of Star Wars Rebels. Cave Troopers are one of the rarer Stormtrooper variants. They specialize in military operations that take place in cave-like geographies. They use lighter armor, much like Scout Troopers, and also carry long vibro knives and low light vision in their helmets to be able to see in the darkest corners of caves. They were first mentioned in Allies and Adversaries, which is a source book for the Fantasy Flight Star Wars role-playing game. Sea Troopers are a type of stormtrooper trained specifically for underwater engagements. They wore white armor and were equipped with breathing tubes connected to a backpack carrying oxygen, and also had a propulsion system which allowed them to move fast underwater. They used a DC-12U, a type of rifle that can operate underwater, and also used an OMS, which stands for One Man Submersible, a small type of submarine that can be operated by a single person. Sea Troopers were stationed on planets like Mon Cala and Lethal, and first appeared in the junior novel Servants of the Empire Rebel in the Ranks, that actually came from a Star Wars Legends comic all the way back from 1983. Underwater Stormtroopers, there's a Stormtrooper variant for everything you can think of. Under the, sea. the Range Trooper is another newer Stormtrooper variant, first appearing in Solo A Star Wars Story, and these guys are actually viewed as one of the toughest troops in the Imperial Army, assigned to frontier worlds to expand Imperial rule. Range Troopers were equipped with magnetized boots to stick to high-speed moving vehicles, and also wielded E-10 blaster rifles. They wore helmets similar to those of Imperial combat assault tank pilots, and a fur coat to withstand cold temperatures. They also don't really look like they'd move too well, considering the weight of those boots, and also the fact they're all wrapped up in a big coat. At least they look warm. The Coastal Defender Stormtrooper, which is basically a fancy way of saying Shore Trooper, and I am very sure about that, <laughs> were occasionally also referred to as the Coastal Guard. They appeared on planets with prominent beaches and coastlines such as Scarif, such as Neamos in Andor, and actually first appeared in Star Wars Commander, even though they're most notable in Star Wars Rogue One. Fun fact about Shore Troopers, Del Miko from Battlefront 2 Story Mode was originally a Shore Trooper, until he later became a member of Inferno Squad. And apparently their lighter armor was suited to provide better mobility, especially from the waist down. And as far as Stormtroopers go, this variant in particular seemed to have a slightly higher level
level of competence than other stormtroopers. It could have also been the fact that the rebels in the Battle of Scarif were completely outnumbered. But let's be real, these are the luckiest kind of stormtroopers. Literally just get to spend all their time at the beach. Did you know that snow troopers are officially referred to as cold weather assault stormtroopers? Who thought of that? Also called snowies by the troopers themselves, snow troopers were the Empire's troops that wore extreme protection against cold temperatures for operations on planets with extremely low temperatures. Their gear consisted mainly of a breathing mask with batteries that could last for weeks, snow boots and polarized goggles. And they also used grappling hooks as part of their equipment. They were going to battle using mostly an E-Web heavy repeating cannon or E-11 medium blaster rifles. And they of course first appeared in The Empire Strikes Back and have made so many appearances since then. <laughs> Believe it or not, there is a rank below Stormtrooper. That is the Imperial Army Trooper. A trooper class so insignificant, so useless, that they rank below Stormtroopers. They were the standard infantry units of the Empire. The main difference from the elite units is that they weren't drafted. These units were composed of young and eager conscripts stepping forward to serve in the Empire. As a result, they probably had more competence than Stormtroopers, but unfortunately were generally just used as cannon fodder. Their armor was similar to an Imperial officer, although they didn't wear a full helmet Helmet covering their face. They also generally carry oxygen masks and polarized goggles to survive environments with hostile air, like Mimbin. As for blasters, they used E-10s, E-11s, and sometimes also E-22 double-barreled rifles. They first appeared in the Lords of the Sith book, but on screen first appeared in Solo a Star Wars Story, and also showed up multiple times in Andor. The Imperial Navy Troopers, otherwise known as Imperial Fleet Troopers. Just as White Stormtroopers were the troops of the Imperial Army, Naval Troopers were the troops of the Imperial Navy, and were generally stationed aboard Star Destroyers and other Imperial installations. They first appeared aboard the Death Star in A New Hope, but have since been seen in Rogue One, in Star Wars Rebels, Battlefront 2, they're in Tarkin, they're in Solo A Star Wars Story, and in the Obi-Wan Kenobi series. Imperial security troopers were a type of trooper in the Empire tasked with maintaining peace in urban environments. These elite security forces were deployed to worlds such as Ferrix to dismantle and eventually replace local governments to ensure order, Imperial rule, and crush local rebellions. They generally operated alongside stormtroopers, but also had authority over stormtroopers. Their arsenal consisted of an E-11 medium rifle and also stun batons to suppress riots, and in combat would wear body armor and helmets similar to Imperial security troopers. They also at times used riot shields, and so far have only appeared in Andor and get absolutely obliterated by the rowdy locals. Mud troopers, otherwise known as swamp troopers, weren't actually officially part of the stormtrooper corps, and were mostly in instead composed of Imperial cadets. Similar to Imperial security troopers, they had plates to protect their torso and also a helmet for their head, and in addition to these, they also wore goggles and oxygen masks for a combat in swamps and trenches. They first appeared in Solo A Star Wars Story, and were mostly sent literally into the mud as a form of punishment for slight insubordination. Purge troopers were one of the most elite kind of troopers in the Empire. During the years the Empire was hunting down remaining Jedi who survived Order 66, Inquisitors used the last batch of clones ever produced by the Kaminoans as specialized soldiers to hunt down the last remnants of the once great Jedi Order. But not all of them were composed of clones, some of them were recruits, elite stormtroopers, and members of the Stormtrooper Corps. They served under the Inquisitors and sometimes also under Darth Vader himself as death squads in their quest to kill Jedi. They were generally resistant to mind tricks unless they encountered a very powerful force wielder. As I said, years later they were eventually replaced by non-clones, and there were also several variations of Purge Trooper, being Purge Trooper Commanders, generally the ones wielding the blasters, and then we also have Electro Baton, Electro Staff, and Electro Hammer Purge Troopers. Death Troopers were an elite group of troopers that would serve under Imperial Intelligence, often used for tasks such as VIP protection, assassinations, and looking after very important military assets, such as kyber crystals on Jeddah for the construction of the Death Star. Their helmet for starters had a number of visual enhancers and advanced sensors to enhance the user's awareness in a battle situation, and also in their helmet was a voice modulator which allowed them to speak in a particular encryption only other death troopers could understand. These elite soldiers carried all kinds of weapons and explosives with them, including smart rockets, C-25 fragmentation grenades, and sound detonators, just to name a few. They first appeared in Rogue One, A Star Wars Story, and have since become a favorite kind of trooper among fans, also appearing in Star Wars Rebels, Battlefront 2, and The Mandalorian. The Death Troopers are heavily inspired by Navy SEALs and SWAT teams, and most commonly use the E-11D blaster carbine as their rifle. Also, just the fact they're called Death Troopers, otherwise known also as Death Soldiers, they are like 
like the Grim Reapers of the Stormtrooper ranks. Are we blind? Deploy the garrison. Deploy it. Dark Troopers, I think, are the only trooper type on this list to not be entirely composed of humans. They were designed mostly as an experimental program by the Empire, which was picked up and continued by Moff Gideon as a part of his plan to overthrow the New Republic. Some versions of Dark Troopers had humans inside the suits, except the suits were enhanced, but for example Moff Gideon's version of Dark Troopers were composed entirely of enhanced droids. They were meant to be a superior elite trooper and featured heat resistant armor, which meant blasters would deal little to no damage to these droids. As we saw in The Mandalorian, their superior strength could even cause damage to armored blast doors, and they required little to no time to be prepared and deployed due to the cold storage units that kept them housed. In Legends, Dark Troopers first appeared in Star Wars Dark Forces, but in the Star Wars canon first appeared in Star Wars Commander, and then also most notably several episodes of The Mandalorian. Shadow Troopers were elite and highly trained stormtroopers in the Empire, who specialized in all different kinds of cloaking techniques and stealth operations. Their suits were armored with experimental cloaking devices that made them invisible and highly stealthy for operations that required smart and quiet action rather than aggressive force. They used a variety of weapons and also occasionally jetpacks, and funnily enough, in the Star Wars canon, they first appeared in Star Wars Battlefront, EA Star Wars Battlefront from 2015. It'd be that one guy on the team wearing Shadow Trooper armor, because you grinded the game for so many years. TK Stormtroopers are known for being the first generation of non-clone troopers in the early days of the Empire. They were trained by clone commandos and were the first wave of recruits to become soldiers before the clones were declared obsolete by the Empire. Their standard equipment is actually very similar to the clones, with white plating all over their body, and a slightly different helmet which is actually based on some of the original designs for Star Wars by Ralph McQuarrie. They carried DC-15A blaster carbines, and first appeared in the animated show Star Wars The Bad Batch. There's also a shock trooper variant of the TK troopers, featuring several red markings on the armor as well as red pauldrons. Magma troopers were a specialized variant of stormtrooper the Empire would deploy to volcanic worlds, such as Mustafar or Sullust, to crush mining revolts and also assist Darth Vader in building his fortress. Their armor is designed to withstand kinds of heat only a volcanic planet could offer, with extra armor on the legs and a respirator connected to their backpack. They also generally wore a black pauldron similar to desert troopers and first appeared in 2015 Star Wars Battlefront. Weapons used by the Magma Troopers include E11 medium blaster rifles, T21 light repeating blaster, and DLT19 heavy blaster rifles. I'd assume they're also good at playing soccer, seeing as though they basically look like they're wearing shin guards, so if anyone tries to kick them in the shin, they're going to be well protected. <laughs> Incinerator Troopers, casually referred to as Burners, are regarded as one of the most lethal units within the Stormtrooper Corps. Incinerator Troopers carry a D-72W Oppressor Flamethrower, which is connected to their backpack. Their armor consists of a red pauldron and red markings across the white Stormtrooper armor to help them ensure the heat they generate once they set the battlefield ablaze. And even though these guys first appeared in The Mandalorian, they're actually taken directly from The Force Unleashed, the 2008 video game which is now Star Wars Legends. And they're actually a different variant variant of Imperial Flame Troopers, the version of this Stormtrooper you might remember from Star Wars Jedi Fallen Order and Jedi Survivor. They wield similar weapons, but basically their armor is a bit different. These guys were also used a lot to defend Imperial facilities from native fauna, basically burning poor innocent wild animals, which is exactly why they got what they deserved. Imperial Shock Trooper units are originally from the final days of the Republic and operated as a security police force for Coruscant, mainly guarding important government buildings such as the Senate and the Imperial Palace. They also served as bodyguards for Imperial senators and escorted them for assignments on other worlds. And at times they were also tasked with guarding prisons and suppressing riots. Generally Shock Troopers just used E-11 blaster rifles, but at times also used heavy weapons and even rocket launchers. They actually first appeared in Revenge of the Sith, but were seen all throughout the Clone Wars, in the Bad Batch, in the Mandalorian, Tales of the Jedi, and also Battlefront 2. And this is another trooper type that evolved from clone trooper form, making its way into the Empire mostly unchanged. Night Troopers were the peculiar stormtroopers Grand Admiral Thrawn commanded from his Star Destroyer while stranded on Peridia. At first glance, they seem battle-worn, almost feral, and their armor is heavily damaged, having been stranded on this planet for 10 years, and in places has seemingly been repaired with pieces of gold, and also red cloth, which appears to be similar to the color worn by the Night Sisters. Actually, how they've managed to survive this long on a planet so far away from the main Star Wars galaxy is still unknown. And even though we hear them chanting under the command of Captain Enoch in what appears to be a very strange cult, <laughs>
they seem to basically just be normal stormtroopers, even with the increase in theories about their undead characteristics and potential resurrection by the Great Mothers using their Dathomirian magic. However, even though the Night Troopers aren't necessarily undead, there is actually an undead trooper, which falls into the Star Wars canon. These were stormtroopers who'd become infected from the virus known as the Sickness, which was created as part of the Empire's Project Blackwing. In Star Wars Legends, undead troopers first appeared in the novel Death Troopers, but were brought back into the Star Wars canon through Star Wars Commander. They're basically stormtrooper zombies and wander around mindlessly killing those in their way. So yes, real stormtrooper zombies do exist and they do actually qualify as a stormtrooper variant. And that's every trooper variant in the entire empire that I could find. But if there's some I missed, please let me know in the comments. Also keep an eye out for the Star Wars Legends version of this video. I'm also potentially gonna make one about the first order. So let me know if you wanna see that. Please subscribe if you enjoyed the video and thanks for watching this. My name's Andrew, I'll catch you soon.